Welcome to our class on setting personal health goals. Today we're going to talk about setting personal health goals and making a plan to meet our goals through lifestyle changes to our diet, exercise routines, sleep patterns, and how much water we drink each day. A healthy lifestyle enables us to live a meaningful life because it gives us the energy that we need to fully participate in our lives and in our communities. It boosts our brain power, helping us to think clearly about big decisions and to focus on our day-to-day -day tasks. Physical health also improves our emotional well-being by calming us and giving us greater self-control. Without a healthy lifestyle, we can develop health problems that sap our energy and cause pain and discomfort. Eventually, these health problems may cause us to give up on things that we value, such as time with family and friends, fun activities, our capacity to work, and the energy to improve ourselves and our community. The good news is that even if you're feeling this way right now, many lifestyle-induced health problems can be lessened through changes that are available to you right now with some support. Today, we are each going to identify a value to focus on for this year and to turn that into a specific, personal, meaningful health goal. We're sharing this approach because it helps you to make a plan of action. Making a plan can be one of the hardest barriers to living a healthy life. With so many choices, we don't even know where to begin. There's a lot of advice out there. Some of it's great. Some of it isn't right for everyone. Some of it is misguided with little evidence that it works. And some of it is downright harmful. If you're considering a large change to your lifestyle, make sure you do it in consultation with a healthcare provider. We hope that identifying your personal health goal in a step-by-step -step plan will provide a healthy lifestyle that is accessible for you right now, at least for this year. Your plan needs to be tailored to your needs, your abilities, your budget, and your time, your strengths and weaknesses, and any barriers that you face. If you pick one that isn't right, you're more likely to give up, and that will keep you from achieving your goals. So instead of picking the latest plan you can read in a website or a magazine, let's start with a clear understanding of our goals and work backwards from there. We're going to start by making sure that our personal health goals are smart, specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, and time-bound. Here's a quick video to explain this in more detail. Regardless if it is professional or personal, we all struggle sometimes to achieve our goals. Many times our struggle is not because of a lack of effort, but rather how our goals have been structured. Anytime you set a goal or if you find yourself struggling while working towards a goal, keep in mind the word SMART. SMART is an acronym that can be used to help evaluate and add structure to your goals. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Actionable, Relevant, and Time Bound. SMART begins with asking yourself the degree to which a goal is specific. This is arguably the most important part of establishing or evaluating a goal. The less specific a goal, the more difficult it is to determine how long the goal should take to complete or how to measure success. Consider the difference between a goal to get healthy versus the goal to lose weight versus the goal to lose 10 pounds. The goal to get healthy is much less specific than a goal to lose 10 pounds. The next question to ask, how is the goal measured? What determines success? Some goals may be best measured by a simple yes or no, such as the goal of climbing to the top of a mountain, while other goals are better measured by using metrics such as the goal to lose 10 pounds. The key to measurement is making sure that in whatever way the goal is measured, it accurately reflects success. For instance, if you do not have access to a scale, then measuring weight loss will be difficult and less accurate. An alternative measure may be to track how many inches you have lost around the waist. But to what extent does this accurately reflect the goal? Without access to a reliable way of measuring weight, we may want to consider buying a scale or restructuring our goal. Actionable is not asking yes or no, but how will the goal be achieved? What is our action plan? 
do we have the resources and capabilities required to achieve success? If not, what are we lacking? Well-designed goals provide clarity of action. If the actions required to achieve a goal are unclear or there are a large number of actions that need to be taken, we should consider breaking down the main goal into manageable, actionable sub-goals. In isolation, any single goal is relevant, but in life, we most often are in the process of pursuing multiple goals. A common issue we face is having too many goals at the same time or pursuing the wrong goals. With this in mind, we need a mechanism to help us monitor our goals to make sure we are pursuing our most relevant goals at any given moment in time. One technique is to place goals in a matrix that looks at effort required versus perceived value of achieving the goal. Not always, but most of the time we will want to focus our energy on low effort, high value goals. Another technique is to use the Pareto Principle, also known as the 80-20 rule. Ask, which are the 20% of goals that will provide me with 80% of my return? The last thing we want to make sure is that goals are time bound. By including a specific date by which a goal should be accomplished, it helps provide incentive and allows us to monitor progress. Consider the difference between the goal to lose 10 pounds and the goal to lose 10 pounds in 10 weeks. Simply by including an element of time, we can now calculate how much we should be losing each week, and if after five weeks we have only lost one pound, we can revisit our action plan. Be wary of any goal that is open-ended, such as the common goal to learn a foreign language. Last, it is important to reinforce that goal setting is not an event, it is an ongoing process of action, evaluation, and revision. Not about lowering goals or standards to ensure success, it is about recognizing goals are dynamic because life is dynamic. We do not live in a static world. Life happens. A goal that is relevant today may be irrelevant tomorrow. Using SMART, stay flexible and motivated by setting aside time to reevaluate your goals on a regular basis. Now that we understand what makes a SMART personal health goal, let's go through the steps to make one of our own by looking at some examples. Here is our first example. I want to start dancing again, so I will lose 20 pounds to reduce the pain in my knees in the next six months and keep my weight loss going at a steady rate for two years. This goal is specific because she is focusing on weight loss. There are many elements to being healthy and our weight is one of them. She is going to use that as a measure of her progress. It's measurable because she can measure her weight on a regular basis. It's actionable because she has taken her overarching goal of 20 pounds every six months for two years, which is 80 pounds over two years, and broken it down into something that is reasonable. If she had decided to make her goal to lose 80 pounds in two years, that would have been very hard to put into action today because it's difficult to take a two-year weight loss goal and turn it into what am I going to eat for dinner tonight? It's relevant because she's made this a meaningful goal for her. Rather than saying she's going to lose weight because she's told to or she feels pressure to, she's doing it for herself to start dancing again and because she feels pain that she wants to get rid of. It's time bound. She has selected six months and she can break that down further in her planning day by day, week by week, in terms of how much progress she wants to make and how she's gonna achieve that progress. One way to make this better would be to add a little more detail about the weight loss plan that she has in mind. How she's gonna change diet, exercise, drinking more water, or other steps that she's going to focus on taking. Here is our second example. I want to play with my grandkids more, so I need to increase my energy and my mobility to get up and down off the floor. My goal will be to stretch for 10 minutes every day and to get a 15 minute walk five days a week. This is specific. It's measurable because she can keep track of whether or not she has completed her 10 minutes of stretching or her 15 minute walk each day. It's actionable because those are both things that she has decided she is capable of doing and integrating into her life. It's a relevant goal because she has connected her ability to move 
and to stay alert and to have energy and vitality with her relationship with her grandkids. She has made healthy life relevant to what she values. And it's time bound in that she can track how much time she's spending each day and she will be able to understand that she has met her goal by getting up and down off the floor easily and feeling energetic. At that point, if she feels like she has met this goal, hopefully she will continue the routines that got her there, but she may also be able to set a new goal that challenges her further. Here's our third example. I want to lower my medication levels, so I will lower my A1C level by one point in six months. This is a very specific goal. It's measurable, and it can be measured at home with a glucometer as well as by taking A1C levels at wellness visits. It's actionable because there is advice available to them on how to lower A1C levels. It would be helpful to include some of that in the goal itself, how they're going to change their diet or their exercise. It's relevant because they have explained why they want to lower their A1C levels. They are currently on medication and they would like to take less of it. This goal is also time bound. They have created a six month goal, hopefully in consultation with their healthcare provider. Here is our fourth example. I want to keep working to support my family. So I need to improve my heart health by lowering my cholesterol levels as my doctor recommended. I will eat four servings of fruits and vegetables every day and reduce my red meat consumption to two small servings each week. This goal is specific because it describes the plan to lower the cholesterol levels. It specifies that that is the part of their health that they are going to measure and track and focus on. It's actionable because as an adult, this person has some control over what they eat every day. This goal takes the advice given to every adult and says, this matters to me specifically because it is related to my cholesterol levels and that is related to my value of being able to be a worker and support my family. Similar to our second goal, this doesn't have a timeline with an endpoint, but it does have a time bound way of looking at day by day and week by week what the dietary consumption will be. If and when this person goes to the doctor and is told that they've made improvements and their heart health is looking good and their cholesterol levels are now at a good place, they can challenge themselves by setting a new personal health goal that pushes them to increase their health further in other ways. Once there is a goal and a plan in place, it's time to get started. Taking that first step isn't easy. And the next 100 steps are gonna be a challenge too. We all need to show ourselves some love and patience as we keep trying. Remember, it's challenging for most people and you're not alone. If at any point it is so overwhelming that you lose hope, seek out someone to support you. Talk to a friend or make an appointment with a healthcare provider who can identify if depression or anxiety is contributing to your feelings towards making these changes. Identify where you are right now. Are you ready to jump into making daily changes tomorrow? Here are four stages of behavior change from the National Institute of Health. Take a moment to honestly assess which stage you are in. Contemplation. I'm thinking about it. Preparation. I have made up my mind to take action. Action. I've started to make changes. Maintenance. I have a new routine. It is important to remember that we do not all start at the beginning and end up maintaining a good routine forever. Every one of us shifts between these stages frequently in our lives. Anytime we feel like we have gone backwards, it's important to remember we have moved forward before and so we know we can do it again. Where you are right now may be dependent upon some things that are happening to you in your life. 
We all change our circumstances throughout our lives, and that changes our routines and our motivation for focusing on our health versus other pressing matters. Let's walk through some common roadblocks so that you can identify whether they're affecting your current routines and affecting what stage of behavior change you're in now and might actually be keeping you from moving forward to a, a new stage. Some very common roadblocks may be feeling like you don't have the time or the money to make these changes. That may take a larger discussion with your household to figure out ways to change your daily routine to prioritize time for preparing foods or for exercising. It may also take a larger conversation about your weekly or monthly budget to try to find ways to change your food purchasing habits or to invest in a pair of sneakers or other equipment that you may feel you need to meet your goal. One way to meet this roadblock is to reach out to others. It may be that there are other people in your life who love to cook or who have an extra pair of sneakers that you can borrow. And it's important to feel like you're not making these changes alone. That is a barrier in and of itself. In order to stay motivated, it's great to have a person that you can reach out to to incorporate these habits into your time together, whether it's talking on the phone while you go for a walk or having a time together on a video chat while you're cooking dinner. Another roadblock that we really need to acknowledge is that sometimes we don't like the physical activities or the healthy foods that we've put into our plan. If you find that after a week or two, you're just not doing something because you don't like it, that's a time to stop and reflect on whether you can substitute a different physical activity that you do enjoy. If you don't like healthy foods that you're being served or preparing yourself, that's an opportunity to build your own skills because there are definitely very delicious healthy foods out there. They don't have to be made with expensive ingredients, but sometimes they do require some good skills with your skillet and with your knife. So it might be time to increase your cooking skills. Maybe think about reaching out to someone you know in your life who already has them and who loves to cook and who might be willing to work with you on those. Now that we've introduced SMART health goals and provided some examples and identified your starting point, Let's think a bit about tracking your progress. Tracking our progress helps us to evaluate our own success by noticing any changes in our habits and routines and clearly seeing when we slide back into old habits, which is going to happen. This information helps us to identify why some days have been better than others. And with this knowledge, we can celebrate our successes and adjust our plan if it's not working. Hopefully you will have a health goal that is measurable. There's a lot of research that shows that people who measure their progress are more likely to stick with their new routines and meet their goals. There are many ways to track your progress. And we can think about this before we've even really finalized our goal to make sure that our goal and our plan are integrated. For people who have weight loss goals, Tracking can be done by stepping on a scale each day or using a tape measure to track changes in their waistline. For those who feel discouraged or uncomfortable using this approach, there are alternatives, such as a daily food log, daily step count from a pedometer, or daily water log. Any of these measurements can be written down or tracked on a smartphone app or a computer log, or on a piece of paper or a calendar. If you're trying to eat more fruits and vegetables, consider a checklist on your fridge. Each time fruits and vegetables get put away, write them down at the bottom of your list. And as you eat them, check them off one by one. If you get through 28 servings in a week, celebrate yourself with a smiley face on the paper or by keeping your growing stack of successful logs. Alternatively, you can use a calendar and keep track of how many servings of fruits and vegetables you ate each day. You can also use a calendar to track glasses of water you drank, times you took a 15 minute walk, or a 10 minute stretch. Celebrate your achievements by looking back over the past few days. If you slip, 
Look at a time when you were doing well and remind yourself that you can do it again. For a more long-term view on tracking your progress, partner with your healthcare provider. Through your visits, you can see how your lifestyle improvements are improving your blood pressure, your weight, your A1C levels, your cholesterol, or your prescription use. This is why it's important to go in for a wellness visit each year. The practice of setting personal health goals and tracking progress towards our goals is something that we can come back to again and again. Sometimes our lives change so dramatically that we need to write a new plan and start over. This will become easier each time and start to feel more natural. We hope this introduction is helpful in getting started on one that feels right for you today. Thank you for joining us today and viewing our class, Setting Personal Health Goals.